You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now, it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 16th. 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from Investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Wednesday. First thing to know today is about the Brexit drama fallout. British Prime Minister Theresa May's government faces a no-confidence vote after the crushing defeat of her Brexit divorce deal by Parliament left Britain's exit from the European Union in disarray just 10 weeks before it is due to leave. After Parliament voted 432 to 202 against her deal, the worst defeat in modern British history, opposition Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn promptly called a vote of no confidence in May's government to be held at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Many investors expect May to survive and to subsequently pursue delaying the planned March 29th deadline for when the UK is supposed to officially leave the European Union. The British pound firmed up following a plunge overnight. The pound dollar was at 1.2875 by 5.30 uh, a.m. Eastern after falling as low as 1.267 late Tuesday. Second thing to know today is global stocks weather the Brexit debacle. The global stock markets weather the UK political storm as investors bet that a disruptive no Brexit deal was less likely after British lawmakers overwhelmingly defeated May's Brexit divorce deal. Asian shares ended mostly higher with Australian shares hitting two month highs and South Korea's Kospi and Hong Kong's Hang Seng reached six-week tops. Third thing to note today is Bank of America and Goldman Sachs report earnings. Earnings from Bank of America and Goldman Sachs will be today's main event as a busy week for earnings rolls along. Bank of America is slated to publish fourth quarter results at 6.55 a.m. Eastern. Analysts are forecasting earnings per share of 63 cents on revenue of $22.36 billion. Same period last year had $0.48 cents in earnings per share and $24.04 billion in revenue. Goldman Sachs is set to follow its Q4 report at 7.35 a.m. Eastern Time earlier this morning. 
Wall Street analysts expected the firm to post earnings per share of $4.42 a share, uh, down from $5.68 a year ago, and revenue of $7.59 billion. Also on the earnings docket for today are BlackRock, Bank of New York Mellon, and PNC Financial Services. They're all set to post results in the morning, while Alcoa is due after the close along with CSX and Kinder Morgan. Fourth thing to know today is Fed's Beige Book is in focus. Despite the ongoing U.S. government shutdown, the Federal Reserve will release its Beige Book at 2 p.m. Eastern. The Beige Book reports on various local economic conditions and will be an input to the upcoming Federal Open Market Committee meeting at the end of the month. After the Fed hiked rates four times in 2018, investors now expect the U.S. Central Bank to halt its monetary tightening policy this year as risks to the U.S. economy mount. The U.S. dollar index, which measures the greenback's strength against the basket of six major currencies, was a shade lower at 95.58. In the bond market, U.S. Treasury yields inched higher, with the benchmark 10-year note standing at 2.73%, while the yield on the U.S. government bonds with two-year maturities was at 2.54%. And the the fifth thing to note today is EIA's weekly oil supply report. Got to know about that. In commodity markets, the U.S. Energy Information Administration will release its official weekly oil supplies report for the week ended January 11th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Analysts expect the EIA to report a drop of around 1.3 million barrels in crude supplies. It confirmed it would be the second straight weekly decline in domestic oil inventories. The American Petroleum Institute said on Tuesday that U.S. crude inventories dropped by 560,000 barrels last week. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures were down 17 cents or 0.3 percent at $51.94 a barrel, while international crude oil futures dipped $0.02 cents to $60.62 a barrel. Our second story today is from CNBC.com. Sears stores to stay open after Lampert prevails in bankruptcy auction with a $5.2 billion bid. Sears chairman Eddie Lampert prevailed in a bankruptcy auction for the U.S. department store chain with an improved takeover bid of roughly $5.2 billion, that's 4.04 billion pounds, allowing the 126-year-old retailer to keep its doors open, people familiar with the matter said on Wednesday. Lampert's bid, boosted from an earlier $5 billion offer, prevailed after weeks of back-and-forth deliberations that culminated in a days-long bankruptcy auction held behind closed doors. The billionaire proposal made through his hedge fund, ESL Investments, will save up to 45,000 jobs and keep 425 stores open across the United States. Lampert boosted his bid by adding more cash and assuming more liabilities, the sources said. The auction held at the Manhattan offices of Wheel Gotchel and Manges, the law firm representing Sears, concluded in the early morning hours of Wednesday. Our third story today is from CNBC.com as well. Mortgage applications surged 13.5% as borrowers rush to take advantage of lower rates. Mortgage demand continues to recover sharply after ending last year in the basement. Total mortgage application volume rose 13.5% last week compared with the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's Seasonally Adjusted Index. This is its highest level since February and came after a 23% jump in the previous week. Volume was just 0.5% lower than a year ago. Refinance demand drove the gains with those applications rising 19% for the week to the highest level since March. Volume was 11% lower than a year ago when mortgage rates were 42 basis points lower. 
And our final story today is from Investing.com. U.S. import prices fall year on year. The drop is the largest since 2016. U.S. import prices fell for a second straight month in December as the cost of petroleum products tumbled and a strong dollar curbed prices of other goods, leading the largest annual drop in more than two years. The report from the Labor Department on Wednesday added to weak producer and consumer prices data, strengthening economists' expectations of a pause in interest rate increases from the Federal Reserve in the near term. Fed Chairman Jeremy Powell said last week that low inflation afforded policymakers the ability to be patient and watch patiently and carefully while they monitored economic data and financial markets for risks to growth. The U.S. Central Bank has forecast two interest rate increases this year. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Wednesday, January 16th, 2019. Your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great day. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Insider.com.